So now let's start working on our sign in route. So I will minimize this, right? And I will create a new, right? Router dot post and the user will be making a post request to let's say sign in route and then we will fire a callback function request dot response and then in here first of all we will destructure so we will so the user will send an email and password to sign in so we can destructure that from request dot body body and email and PAWSWRD password like so now here we can put a little check if email is not present or uh, I have made a typo e -M -A -I -L, email is not present or password is not present then we will throw an error so rest.st a status code with 422 which means that we have server has understood the request but server cannot process it because that's an error okay we will send a response json response with the error here we can say that please pro vide provide email or paws word or please add please add email or password okay so if a user have provided email and password then we can we can make use of user model and here we can again find the user find one user with the email with the email oh here we can write we need to write a json and inside this email key with the email which we are receiving so we are finding a user again with the email if now here we can chain on then right then we will receive here saved user right so we will receive a user in here and here again we can put a little check saved user and i will put a not in here not right so if we didn't get the user then we will send s dot s a status with again 422 with the error json uh, invalid inva if we didn't get the user then then the email is invalid right so we can throw an error for or we can send an error uh, if user has entered a wrong email right uh, inva -ID, invalid email or we can add a password PAWSWRD invalid email or password okay so we can put a return keyword so that it should not execute further if we encounter this error so we should always put a return keyword right okay so that when we encounter this errors further code should not execute okay okay so uh, if we have got a user right if we have got a user with that email then we need to compare the password right so to compare the password you can make use of this bcrypt dot compare right so we, we can compare the password which we are receiving from our, our which we are receiving right p a -S -S password right which we are receiving from in here which we are receiving from the client and uh, we can compare this password with the saved password in our database so we are getting the saved user record right so we are getting this individual record in here right in individual record and this record has a password right so in this record so we can use this saved user record saved user record and it has a password field so we can access that so we are comparing the password which we are getting from in here from the client and we are comparing it, it with the password which is saved in our database right okay now we can chain on then then now here we will get a boolean value that if password is match or not so here we can write do match m-a-t-c-h do match m-a-t-c-h m-a-t-c-h if password did matched then we need to do something so if do match is true so this will be a boolean value of do match is true then mean that means that user has successfully signed in or user can sign in right the user can proceed further so we will send a json json response 
right with me double s as a message as you double c e uh, not like that inside the course as you double c e double s f u successfully uh, s i g n e d signed in like so but else if password didn't matched then we can again throw an error right control c control v invalid email or password here you can see i can put just invalid password but let's say if some hacker is trying to hack into our website then we should not provide hacker a hint that that hacker has entered the valid email id but password is wrong right so we should always use this uh, same right error right if even if the password is correct and the email is correct email is wrong or if the email is correct and password is wrong right so yeah so we should use the same errors in both the cases right so we should not give an hacker hint that password is correct and email is wrong oh we should not do that okay so we should always throw an error with this with the same text right so we should, so yeah this it's a good practice okay and with this then we can catch uh, when the oh, so here we can chain on the catch block if we get any error so in this uh, error we can write error and we can console dot log that error C O N S O L E console dot log the error. So this error will be produced from our end. That is why I am putting console dot log. This error will be not produced from the user side, right? So if the error is produced by user, then I, we are successfully sending the messages. But this error, this is this will be a something that this will which will be uh, error from our side, right? Uh, from the developer side. That is why I am putting a console dot log so that I can uh, see the error in here, right? And I can correct it. yeah okay i think okay let's save this and let's let's test this out so let's go to this postman and let's see what was the password so password was 123 ramesh right okay now here i can get rid of this name in here right and i will instead make a request to sign in here make sure in this header you have written content type applications as json okay now Uh, let's see if a server is running right server is running okay let's make a send get uh, the post request right so let's wait for the response oh successfully signed in so now let's change the password let's change the password to ramesh maybe 12 and now let's make a uh, let's make a request and now let's see here we can see invalid email or password okay so this is amazing right so our error handling is also working and it's it's beautiful yeah our application is taking shape but there is still one big issue now if the user is successfully signed in then we should give user a token now there is a concept of jwt right like jwt authentication json web tokens so we should give user a token right now why we should give user token because let's say if user is signed in then user should be able to access the protected resources now how user will be able to access protected resources if user has that same token so when user will successfully sign in then we will give a user a, a unique token right and if user want to access a protected resource then user should come along with that token then only we will uh give us uh give uh, then only we will allow user to access protected resources protected resource if user has that token so when user is successfully signed in then always we should give a user a token so that he can access a protected resource so this is basically in concept of token so we will learn how to implement that in the next video